all of you, all of you come get some, because Mike Tyson's out here, he's waiting for you, all come get some. 50 fights. He just took a right he's down. I'm Mike Tyson, and there's no one like me. 44 knockouts. Weight oh, advantage, and, and he put it all there. there. Whoa. Because I'm confident I could be any fighter in the world. Regarded by many as the most dangerous man to ever lace the gloves down. Oh. I just can't help it who you are. You have to go down because there's a law when Mike Tyson hits you. Today, we'll be counting down the top 10 most punishing Mike Tyson fights. So if you've clicked on this video to watch a couple quick 30 second knockouts, I'm afraid you're in the wrong place. Because after, cause after I, I kick Stuart ass and give him a slow beating, nearly death. These are the men that were too brave or even too stupid to realize that they had no chance in winning the fight at all. Instead, they were just taking a long, overwhelming beating to the delight of the crowd. I'm a champion of the world. I'll fight any man alive. And I feel I could be anyone in the world. And I'll take on all comers. Coming in at number 10, we have an 18-year-old Mike Tyson weighing his career low 212 pounds, taking on Don Halpin in just his third professional fight. Don Halpin trying to give Tyson in the eye, and I am glad. I tell you, I am glad I am this side of the ropes and not that side of the ropes. Don was fairly experienced having 28 fights and thought he could potentially cause the young Tyson some problems. But his experience meant nothing as Tyson could have finished the fight whenever he wanted to. He was switching stances and trying out different head and body combinations. And just as the fourth and final bell rang, Tyson ended the fight in devastating fashion. Can Tyson finish this? I think so. I think so. That's enough. Now that last right hand up, that was questionable. Tyson said, I'm starting to think that you're unstoppable. Do you feel that you're the best heavyweight in the world and you can step in with anybody right now? I know just a number of months ago you said just a few more fights. Are you ready right now? I feel I am the best fighter in the world right now. Coming in at number 9, we move just one month later from the previous video as Tyson took on the undefeated in three fights, John Alderson. Alderson showed a lot of heart to get through the first round, but Tyson bloodied his nose and moved in for the kill in round 2. Muscle underneath. Now Tyson, they told him to go to the body, he's trying to do that in this round. So there's the right, oh, good countering right hand and that's just gone to Alderman. Oh, backs up another right hand, a combination by Tyson and he goes under attack. You know, Tyson looked at Cappuccino moment and goes, if uh, you want to stop this. There he goes, right back to work on that left eye as Alderson stays on his feet. And Halpin, I guess, is the only man, and this one may not go much longer as a crushing right hand sends Alderson down and Cappuccino. As this one ends, officially a TKO in the second round by Mike Tyson. I would love to fight the winner. I don't know who the winner's going to be, but I would love to fight the winner. I'm champion of the world. I'll fight any man alive. And I feel I could be anyone in the world. And I'll take on all comers. At number 8, we have the shortest fight on the list, and it also turned out to be the shortest fight of Tyson's career. The year was 1986, and Tyson met heavyweight contender Marvis Frazier on his route to the title. If the name Frazier sounds familiar, it should. He was the eldest son of the heavyweight legend Joe Frazier, who had high hopes for his son. But the guidance of his old man would not be enough to tame the wrecking ball that was Mike Tyson. Tyson comes out slugging. He comes out smoking like Marvis's father, Joe. Marvis must move or we're going to be out of here very, very quickly. Uppercut and Marvis is hurt. Frazier is down. Joe Cortez moves in to have a look. And he's going to stop the fight. It did not last 20 seconds. Marvis is badly hurt at this point. Uppercut again. And there is Marvis is out of his feet. Everything after this is just incidental. And I came out and I was confident. I came out, I knew the fight. I felt the deep mind. I was going to stop him in the first round. At number seven, we have Tyson versus Jameson. The commentators from the fight were completely unaware of who the six foot four heavyweight Mike Jameson was before the fight. But later sparring videos that were released from the Catskill gym would show that Jameson was one of the rare fighters that would train and spar daily with young Mike to help prepare Tyson for the big men in the heavyweight division. It was pretty well known that not many men could last a full sparring session with the aggressive Tyson, but Jameson proved to be a tough man coming back day after day, fighting as hard as he could. And when they eventually met in the ring, he was prepared to take Tyson the full distance. Don't blink, this is round number one. People have compared his punching power to guys like George Foreman and Joe Frazier are saying he punches the same, but he's so much faster. But wicked punches he throws. Just 13 days ago. Good left hook to the body. That's a very good sign. Free on Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson in the black trunks. Figures to be the next heavyweight champion of the world. You see a heavyweight throw a combination of five and six punches, but Mike Tyson does it. He knows how to get him out of there, and he's going about it the right way. Here he comes, Tyson, who wants to be a finisher like Ray Leonard, Ray Robinson, and Joe Lewis. Mike Tyson takes two steps forward. Let's go with a couple of lefts now. A right, a left. He's got him down. Mike Tyson sends Mike Jamison 
Coming in at number 6, we have Iron Mike taking on Steve Zowski. Tyson had built up a record of 18-0 with 18 knockouts, and Steve had a record of 25 wins with 9 losses. Despite the 9 losses, with 4 by TKO, Zowski claimed to have never been knocked off his feet in his entire career. But now, he was in with a different breed of fire. And round number 1 is underway. Out comes Tyson, as he always does, pressing straight forward, doesn't wear a robe into the ring, doesn't wear his socks, just puts on the shoes, the trunks, and the gloves, and he's ready to go to war. His jab is just an awesome weapon. Five, the first round. Tyson moves in and smacks it. That time was a short left hook to the head. A solid combination by Tyson, who really opens up a solid right hand to the body by Mike Tyson, who looks to be just getting some real heavy live sparring right Rooney rate his performance tonight. C. How about you rate your performance? Uh, I'm always giving myself a zero. I'm never impressed. Have you given yourself an A yet? Never. I have never will. I never will. That's perfection. That's what we're striving for. At number five, we have what would be the last 15 round heavyweight title fight ever recorded before the rules changed to 12 rounds in 1987. Mike's opponent would be the 1984 super heavyweight Olympic champion Tyrell Biggs, who had built up an unbeaten record as a pro and was the first to challenge Tyson for his unified titles. Boxing experts Larry Merchant and Angelo Dundee felt that Biggs could be the first man to beat the seemingly invincible Tyson, but that plan fell through after seven rounds of pure punishment from Iron Mike. Biggs started to become a stationary target, which is wrong. That was the most damage. There was a big right hand, best punch of the fight. That was the left hook, Barry. That was the left hook I was talking about. And another big left hand, and Biggs is hurt. And there was a huge left hand. And a combination by Tyson. Biggs holding on a great deal now. There was a right hand by Tyson. Back to amateur days. Another left hand, and there's a great shot. Biggs is in trouble. Oh, this, this is it. He is gone right now. He has no legs at all. And 10 seconds to go in a round. There's a left hand. He's down again. It's over. It's all over. And it wasn't even close. And what we've seen has happened so often in which a fighter, after a few rounds, starts to hang on to Tyson. At number four, we have Tyson taking on the former heavyweight champion, Pinklin Thomas. Thomas was an elite heavyweight in his time, having a jab that some say was the closest to Liston's jab, which is a compliment of the highest order. After an explosive start for Tyson, Thomas showed some skill to try and keep the young lion off him. But Tyson was slowly closing the gap, and in round six, he put a devastating series of punches together that left Thomas out. And a right hand behind it. Thomas in trouble again. And now Tyson moves in for the kill. Two uppercuts and a left hand. Thomas trying to hold on. Serious trouble. And down he goes. fighting Tony Tucker and unifying the whole Absolutely. heavyweight division Absolutely. next. Absolutely. I want a title so bad it's not even funny. At number three, we have the 10-round annihilation of Jose Ribalta. After one of the most devastating knockdowns you will ever see in round two, Ribalta got back up and endured a serious Iron Mike-style beating until the 10th and final round. Coming in at number two, we have the infamous battle between Tyson and Mitch Green. Although the 1986 fight was a pretty one-sided beating on Mike's behalf, the real beating would come two years later when the fighters were caught up in a street fight on the streets of Harlem. Now, trust me, Mitch, by all means, I don't really believe this is advantageous to your health. 
I already kicked your ass now. I just get mad and miss it. Fuck you, Faye! And they just slipped in their mouth, right? But it didn't turn out cool. I broke my, I broke my hand in this gorilla's face, right? All right, so this is what you never knew about the fight. You all knew about the altercation, but this is what you didn't know. Mitch, Mitch was hiring some powerful shit that gave him like alien-like strength, right? And um, it's a beautiful combination of Man, he's beautiful comedy. But um, he doesn't go down. Weagles wobble, but they don't fall down. The Mitch comes, right? The Mitch, the Mitch comes. Fuck you, man. This is down again. I was nervous. You know? I, haven't, I haven't had a fight, like a street fight in seven years. And I, I, was, I was scared. And I was getting paranoid because he was so close. He kept getting close to me. I mean, so I defended myself. Who threw the first punch here? He did. He sucker punched me because he's with his friends. At number one, we have the relentless pounding Tyson dished out on Jesse Ferguson back in 1986. The amount of solid uppercuts landed in this fight was just insane. And we should mention Jimmy before the action heats up too much. It's a 16-foot range. Very much to Tyson's liking. Tyson's so special. He threw a tremendous left hook, missed with it, and didn't go off balance. Always in position to punch. Not giving him very many punching opportunities. No one in the arena believed before this began that it would go to a decision. He broke Ferguson's nose, Jim. He is in desperate trouble. He will not last much longer. Rivera almost stopped it there. Mike Tyson's nose is a great finisher. Let's see how he does with Ferguson. Was in trouble in both the first and tenth rounds, and now he 